this is Miss Crystal from Artbeat San Diego. I'm behind the camera today, giving you guys a really full view of my canvases. I'm so excited to do a little painting lesson with you today. And this is kind of our motto today. We are going to be makers of pretty things. In fact, let me move this out of the way. What we're going to be making today are going to be two super cute little owls. And some of you may be making more than two. So what I have in front of me, though, are two blank canvases. And the way I have my canvases set up, it's called portrait. So your canvas should be set up long and tall ways, just like this. And if you are working from home and you don't have an easel, like you see um, on my desk here, you can also just paint with your canvases laying flat. So I think it's really important to get your canvases arranged in a comfortable way. And then also let's go over a few of the other art materials that we need to work on our paintings today. So nearby, what you'll need are some brushes. Okay, I'm gonna recommend this brush stay dry. So this is gonna be our big brush today. And because it's a sponge, it can just set out on a napkin and should not go in our water cup. And then the other brushes that you want to make sure you have is something that looks small and something that's a little bit bigger and we'll consider that a medium brush. And if your brushes are different colors than mine or perhaps a different shape, that's okay. You just want to make sure you have three and different sizes is very helpful. In addition to our canvases and our brushes, we're also going to be doing some painting. So we need some napkins nearby. And then also I'm gonna recommend that we have a plate nearby to do a little bit of color mixing. The painting that we're gonna to do today will require us to make some new colors and this will be our artist palette to do that. And then of course we won't get far without our paint. So get your little paint cups open. And here's a little reminder, these paint cups have traveled. So chances are there's some paint on the lid and up in this little edge. So when you open them, you wanna do so very carefully, just carefully take the lid off and set them flat near your canvases. It's very normal, in fact, very common to get paint on our fingers throughout this process. And the good news is it comes off of our fingers, so no need to worry about that. I recommend a good hand washing at the very end. The thing that we want to be very careful, though, is to try not to get paint on our clothes. So if you're wearing your favorite outfit today, you may want to switch or put an apron on, something to protect yourself, and um, also your tabletop. You may want to put some paper down or something just to protect your tabletop surface. So let's talk about what to expect with this. This is going to be a, a video tutorial on how to get started on your painting um, because sometimes we don't know where to start and what to do next. So I'm going to help you with that. And what I'd like for you to do is feel comfortable at the end of this video to move forward on your own and add some creative touches. That's the great thing about art. You can add things, change things, make your painting your own. So something to keep in mind is I may paint at a speed that feels a little bit too fast for you. Um, but the beautiful thing is this is a recording. So if you need more time, get familiar with hitting the pause button. You can pause the video, work as long as you need to and hit play when you're ready to start again. All right, we're just about ready to start. There's just one more thing. We all need a cup of water, okay? So any kind of cup, this is my go-to paint cup. Um, we're gonna need to clean our brushes as we're painting today. So have some water nearby. With that being said, we are ready to start. So the first part of this painting experience is finding your baby brush the tiniest one, and it's best if this brush is dry. And the first thing we're going to do is just figure out where we want our branches to go on our canvas so that we can place our cute little owls on top of them. So I'm gonna recommend that we get two colors out. 
you're black and you're white. And we're going to do something kind of silly together. We're not going to mix the color we need. We're just going to dip our brush into two colors at once and use that color on our canvas. So let me show you an example. I'm going to take my tiny brush. I'm going to go like this, push it right into your white paint and see, I've got a good amount of white right on the end. And then I'm going to take my black paint and push it in there also. And you'll notice I now have a little bit of black and white on there. So this is the color we're going to use for the first step. So in order to get our owls on our canvas, we need to give these cute little owls a place to stand. So right here along the bottom is a great place to put a branch. So not too high and not too low, okay? So let's look at our canvas and find the middle. Where's the middle? Right through here. Okay, now we wanna drop down to about the middle of the middle. Okay, so if it's, this is the full middle, the middle of the middle is right around here. That's a good place to start our first line. All right, so over here on the left side of my canvas, I'm gonna take my brush that has white and black on it. I'm gonna do a line that goes across. And then I'll skip a little bit of space and add one more. And if you're painting with a loved one today, you wanna make sure that your branches match up. So adding one more branch on the other side is great. And now that we have this, we know our owls can go above this and it's a really good time to clean your brush after you finish that step. So we wanna try not to make this baby brush get fuzzy. We wanna keep it kind of pointed so it can make some good lines in the future. So when you rinse this brush, just stir it up in your water like this, round and round and round. And then also very important, it's easy to forget this step, but we have to dry our brush off carefully, just like this. If we have too much water on our brush, we'll get drips in our painting and we might not like that. So gentle, so our brush stays nice and sharp. So now we are ready to start creating our owls. So if I were you, I would decide which owl is the mama owl and which owl is the baby owl. I'm going to be showing the mama owl on the left side and the baby owl on the right side. So we're gonna continue to use this small brush now that it's clean. We all wanna start by making a creative decision. What color would you like your owl to be? So for my mama owl, I'm going to do the colors of red and yellow. And for my baby owl, I'm going to do the colors blue and green. And if you want to change these colors, you can. Um, and I will give you a recommendation to first watch this step so you understand how to create the shape of the owl. And then if you need to pause for a moment and mix some new colors, you can do that. So let's start with mama owl. So I'm gonna start with the color red and I'm gonna take my small brush and push it right into the red cup. Now the shape that we're going here for at first is kind of like a U shape, like the letter U. And if you want these owls to be close to each other, your U shape will be a little bit closer to the inside of your canvas here. And then the other owl will be close on this side. So first thing is skip some space here. Don't make your U shape right on top of your branch. Skipping a little bit of space and then I'm going to do a scoop like this. See how it kind of looks like the letter U. And then I'm going to bring my lines up. And I recommend going nice and slow. That way you can control the shape that you're creating. We're gonna keep going up, up, up until we get right about to the tip top of the canvas here. And notice I'm just giving myself a little bit of room and stopping. And I'm gonna bring this one up just as far as I can until I hit the edge.
I will leave that shape just the way it is. And I can show you how to do the baby owl on the other side. So I'm going to do a different color for the baby owl. I'm pushing my brush into the blue. And I'm gonna do the same shape. So I'm gonna skip a little bit of space here and do a little U shape. But because it's a baby, I want it to be a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit lower than the other shape. Right about there works for me. And you'll notice that they're angled together so that their heads can be close together. Now work on this shape first, and then what you can do is go ahead and close that shape off, and I'll show you how to add the top of our owls, okay? So owls have little ears. We're gonna do the ears next. If our ears are too big, it's going to look like a cat. So we want them to be triangle shaped, but not too big, okay? So back to the mama. I'm gonna start my first ear right where I left off, right here on the top and make a little point. And same on this side, a little point. And then what we wanna do is connect these two ears with not a flat line, a little bit of a curved line, just like that. And what we'll do is the same or similar thing on the baby owl. So start with tiny ears, just tiny little triangle ears on one side and the other. And then remember to connect them. It's not a flat line. It curves up a little bit to show that the owl has a round head and not a flat head. And the good news is we're off to a good start. This is the general shape that we want for our owls. And now we're just gonna go back in and add some details. So now that we have the general shape, what we can do is start working on some details. So we're still gonna use our tiny brush because that's a good brush for details. And I'm gonna recommend that we use the same color that we've been using for each of our owls. Okay, so back to the mama owl, what I'm going to do is show you guys a example of how to add your wing. So I'm just getting a little bit more red on my brush. So our wing should be fine, maybe like the halfway point on your owl's body. And that's um, a good place to start the wing. So right where the halfway point is. And the wing is going to be three feathers and they look kind of like raindrop shapes. So I'll find the halfway point right about here and three raindrops. Okay, so one like this. Do you see how that kind of looks like a water drop? And then I'm going to do two more. One more and one more. And this last one will go a little bit onto the body like that. So three feathers. Sometimes it's best to keep it kind of simple. So we'll stick with three and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And if you're hitting the edge of your canvas here, you just wanna do your best to squeeze in whichever ones you can. So here's one, two, and my third one's gonna go kind of like off the canvas a little bit. And we wanna do the same thing for that baby as well. So when you're working on your baby, make sure you're using the same color you started with. Find the halfway point and three. One, two, and one more. Cute, cute, cute. One, two, and three. All right, so if your hand's a little shaky, it's okay because it's a feather. So we'll just do our best on that step. And if you need a little time to work on it, go ahead and pause the video and join me when you're ready to move on. So what we have now is two little details to add to our birds. And then we're gonna switch brushes and start filling in the background. So same brush, we're still using that baby brush and we're using the same color we've been using this whole time. What we wanna do is create a cute little round shape for the owl's belly. And again, we don't wanna to go too far up. So I'm gonna say just about right through the middle of the wings. Here's an example. What I'm gonna do is a nice little swoosh, almost like a little rainbow shape. 
right through here. And if you have any space um, between the belly and the body behind the wings, make sure you make a little attaching line there as well. So nice little curve shape on both. I'll just give you an example of how it looks on the baby. Super cute. I can't wait to see how these are going to look when we're all done. We're making really good progress. The only other little thing we want to do is make some big circles for the owl's eyes. Now, circles can be very hard to do. So if you have something round nearby that you want to use for tracing, that can be a good solution. Or you can just try your very best to get two circles that are kind of the same. If you have um, one of those paint lids that came off of your paint, if you have one of those handy and it's not too messy, that can be a good shape for the mama's eyes. It might be a little too big for the baby, but you can try it if you're interested. And I'll show you an example. So I'm using one of these lids that's pretty clean. It's got maybe a little bit of black on there. So I'm going to wipe it clean first. And I'm still using that baby brush. And I'm using the same color we've been using. What I'm going to do is hold the lid up right where I want one eye to go. And then I'm just going to carefully outline it carefully peel it off and you'll see it makes a nice circle. And to do the second eye, I want to use my napkin here and just get some of that excess paint off so it doesn't create some smudges. Okay, so wiping the lid clean again. And then reusing it for the second eye if you would like. And here's something to keep in mind. Babies typically, little baby animals, have big eyes, right? That's what makes them look so cute. So if you want to use the same lid for the baby, you can. I would just double check and make sure you have room for it to fit before you do it. And I can show you what it will look like. They're going to be pretty big, but I think I'm going to like it. So same thing, I'm just taking my tiny brush with my owl color and creating an outline. Ooh, those are big. I think it's cute though. For me, I think it works. If you think it's too big, just by kind of watching what I'm doing, if you want to try and just draw your own, that's fine. Um, or if you have something round nearby that might be a better size, you can use it. Cute. All right, so if you need more time on that step, feel free to pause the video and take all the time you need, and then we will be ready to move on when you hit play. For me, I am ready to move on. So what I'm going to do is recommend once we get these shapes done, let's say bye-bye to our small brush. It can go back in your water cup and let it soak for a little bit. And what we're going to do is switch over to using our medium brush. So the brush that is one size bigger. And what we can do is start filling in the owl's bodies. Okay, now we're going to leave the bellies the way they are. And we're not going to put anything inside the eyes, but we can fill in the wings and um, this kind of like background color on the owl. So if you wanna change your color at all, you can do a little bit of color mixing on your plate. Um, for instance, if you wanna make maybe the baby owl have more of a light blue color, you can take blue and white, mix it together. If you want the baby owl to have like a teal color, it's blue and white with a little bit of yellow. So use some caution when you do your color mixing because you don't wanna run out of paint. And we don't need too much paint for these next two steps, okay? So I'm just gonna start working on my mama bird here and I'm using my medium brush. I'm sticking with just the red color. And I'm just gonna start filling in inside of some of the shapes I just outlined, including the wings. Don't forget to do the top of the head as well. So the forehead and the ears.
this is a good time too to make any slight adjustments if you need to make the wings a little fluffier like I did. And then if you're working on your baby bird, you wanna be doing the same thing with your medium brush, choosing the color that you like. So I'm gonna make a little bit of light blue here. I'm gonna just take a little bit of blue, put it on my mixing plate, take a little bit of white and stir it into it. Cause I think when I think of a baby, I think of more of like light colors. That's just me, okay? Of course you could do something different if you prefer. Okay, and then same thing. Let's go ahead and work on filling in the body. Just leave that belly and the eyes open. So it's really important to fill in all these parts. And then if your paint looks like it's really quite wet, you may wanna take a little bit of a drying break. Um, what we have coming up next will be an opportunity to start filling in the background and then coming in with lots of details for our birds. So um, if you need to pause this video, once you get your owls filled in, go ahead and take a little bit of a dry break. And when you're ready to join me, Go ahead and hit play or just continue listening. For this next step, I'm gonna recommend that our small and our medium brushes are in our water cup. And we're finally going to be using the sponge brush. You also wanna make sure you have your mixing plate out. We're gonna mix a really nice color for the background. So I think it's a good time to maybe infuse some pink into this painting. Um, so why don't we start by mixing our pink color and we're gonna use this for our background. So when we mix a large amount of paint, it's very important that we use our lighter color first. And to make pink, it's going to be white and red. So first we're gonna start with our white. So let's take that brush, push it into your white cup and get a good amount on your brush. Look, it's very drippy. And go ahead and wipe, wipe it on your mixing plate. Try to save a little bit of white. We are gonna use it for something in the future, but you can use um, a good amount if you need it for this. Okay, and to start tinting it closer to a pink color, we're gonna add our red. And for this, I'm actually going to quickly wash out my medium brush which I did off camera. Wash out your medium brush, dry it off and just scoop, maybe one scoop of red to start and put it right into your white mixture, just like that. Stir it up and you should start to see your pink right away. We're kind of going for like a bubble gum pink or a cotton candy. And if you want it stronger, just add a little bit more red. And at some point, let's start stirring it up with this brush as well. And as you're stirring, make sure you're getting it like all over that spongy brush. The spongy brush is a sponge. So what it's gonna do is start to soak your paint up, which is good. That's what we want. And when you get the pink color you like, let's start working on the outer edge first. Notice how I'm using this brush. I'm smoothing my paint out, no big clumps. Okay, and I'm bringing it right down to the top of that branch. I'm gonna start working close to my owl, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of space. So don't go right up next to your owl. I'm going to also fill in this little corner, but again, I'm leaving a little bit of space. See, just a little bit of a white outline because what I'm going to do in a moment is switch over to a smaller brush to get closer to my owl. But for now, I'm going to leave a little bit of an open space. And then also don't forget to paint underneath of your branch as well. Same color. 
And if you're working on your baby owl canvas, you can be doing the same thing, starting over on the edge, smoothing your paint out as you go. Getting close to the baby owl, but leaving a little bit of a gap. And don't forget, go underneath your branch as well. So often people will ask me, well, should we paint the sides, the sides of your canvas? Because if you end up hanging it up, you um, may notice the sides. Here's the tricky thing. We don't want to run out of paint by painting the sides. So I would recommend let's work on the front of our canvas first. And if you're somebody out there that really wants those sides painted, do it at the very end with whatever paint you have left. But for now, let's just focus on painting the places that really matter, which is the front. Now, I mentioned this when we first started, but a little reminder, this brush should not go in the water cup, okay? So when you're done using it, just set it maybe on your mixing plate out of your way. After you get your background filled in, what you wanna do is clean out your medium brush, dry it off, right? Don't forget that part. And then use the same color, that same pink color, to start filling in right up next to your owl so there's no gaps. And we're using our medium brush, that way we can go a little bit slower and carefully get right up next to your outlines. Filling in any of those little white spots that were open. You wanna work on the mama owl and if you're working on your baby owl, you could be doing this at the same time. This part can be a little tricky, so take your time. Double check your work, make sure you're not missing any little spots. And also don't forget to share your paint, right? If you're doing this painting with a loved one and they're running low on a certain color, if it matches your color, maybe you can give them a little bit of yours, help each other with the outlines. When you're getting close to your owl, these things take a little bit of concentration. And what we're not going for is perfect. We're just going for our best. So I finished my background, but chances are you might still be working on yours. So go ahead and pause this video if you need a little bit more time to work and then join me when you're ready to move on to the next step. And the first part of moving on will be putting your medium brush in your water cup sloshing these brushes around, let them soak for a minute. We're gonna start filling in our owl with some details. So what we can do now is start filling in the bellies of our little owls. And the best brush for this is going to be your medium brush. So take a moment to wash it, dry it off. And you may wanna chat with each other and come up with an idea of what color you would like to make the belly. So, I'm gonna start actually with the baby bird. And if you have a little printed example of this bird, you probably noticed that it's got some green to it. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a nice little minty green if you're interested. So we wanna get our mixing plates ready. And this is a little tutorial on how to create the mint color for the baby bird. So medium brush is clean. We're gonna start with taking our brush kind of like a spoon and scooping into our white paint adding it to our mixing plate and doing it one more time. Two scoops of white. And then what we'll do is without even cleaning our brush, we're just gonna be careful. We're gonna scoop into our yellow and take a little clump out. It's actually kind of a big clump, big clump. Stir it right into your white. It's gonna make a really, really light yellow. And then to start make it 
making it closer to your green, you're going to take your brush again very carefully, little scoop of blue to start. Mix that blue right into your light yellow mixture. And you'll start to get a soft green color. Going for kind of like a minty green. And if you want it to be like a little bit more of a bold color, just take a little bit more yellow. You can mix more yellow in there and that makes it closer to like a lime green which is what I'm making today. It looks really light on camera, but in real life, it's actually a little bit of a different color. That's the tricky thing about cameras, makes colors look a little bit different. So hopefully the point is that you're making a color that you like. And we don't need a lot of it, but sometimes when we mix, it starts to get bigger and bigger. So just be mindful of that so you don't run out of your color. And if you're enjoying the green that you made, what you're gonna do is fill in the belly here. Okay, and then you're also going to fill in the eyes as well with the same color, same brush. So all of the belly and then all of the eyes as well. So I just put like little dots there just for reference. Okay, but when you're painting, don't do dots. Go ahead and just fill it all the way in. So smooth your paint out. And then for the mama, you can decide what color you would like to fill in. Perhaps you want to use yellow, which you may notice is on the example, but other color choices could be um, an orange mixture, or you can mix perhaps some red and some blue and some white to make a purple. Okay. So for the mama bird, I, I'm just going to use the yellow. I like that. It's a nice contrast color here. I'm going to use my medium brush and do the same thing. I'm going to fill in the belly, but not both of the eyes, okay? So listen up, mamas. Don't fill in both of the eyes. Let's fill in the belly all the way. Because we're actually going to make it look like the baby owl's eyes are kind of closed. And then the mama owl, her eyes are going to be open. So we want to leave a little bit of white space on the eyes, okay? So filling in the belly first. And then when you are ready to do the eyes, this is for the mama bird only. I can show you up close. You're just gonna take your brush and do just a little rim, okay? So a little bit of yellow or whichever color you're using right on the inside rim of the eye. And just leave the middle white. It's gonna take some concentration. If you're a little nervous to do this with your medium brush, you could most definitely try your small brush also. Okay, so it's a pretty light color, but hopefully you can see it on there. Now, once we get these parts filled in, now we can finally come in and start adding the details on our birds. So the details are going to be in our small brush. So I'm taking mine out of the water cup and drying it off. And if you're not ready for this step, join me when you are. I'm going to show you some things we can add. So small brush, I'm going to recommend that we go back to this color. Okay, so whatever color you used on the, um, the main part of the owl, like here's the red and this one was blue. Use your small brush and go back to your original color, same color we used for outlines. I'm getting a little bit on my brush. We're just gonna add a few little swishes like this through the belly to represent some feathers. And you wanna do that also on the baby bird. So same color you started with, small brush, maybe some little ones because it is a little bird. We're gonna go ahead and continue with the same small brush. Now that we have a good idea of how it feels in our hand, I do want to remind you to hold it the same way that you would hold like your 
your pencil. Okay, so nothing back here. Nice, good grip on it. Why don't we go ahead and move forward to adding the nose or the beak, and then we can finish with the eyes and talk about some ways to work on your background to finish. All right, so the little noses. So noses can come in any color for an owl. They can be white, they can be black, they can be orange. So I'm gonna let you decide which color you would like to use. If you wanna do orange, you're going to mix um, mostly yellow, like a big scoop of yellow, and then just a little splash of red, careful, because the red can be strong. And you may also wanna add a little white to it. Okay, so if you're mixing orange, you can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and show you with black. It's gonna show up better on camera. And um, the point is the noses are like little triangles. If you want your owls to look cute, make the noses small. So right up here in between the eyes, I'm gonna start. Let me bring it a little closer so you guys can see. Kind of just a little triangle pointing down something like that. And if you like the black, that's what it looks like. And if you would prefer to do orange or white, pick a color that's going to show up pretty well. We can also start to add the eyes. Okay, so the eyes definitely look great with black. It's good to have a little contrast. So for this baby, I'm going to do eyes closed, which are going to be little kind of like U shapes. Notice I'm putting them close to like the bottom of the eye. And then for the mama, maybe she's looking at her baby. So I'm going to do the opposite shape. I'm going to do up like this, up. Maybe even throw in some eyelashes, a little flick on the ends. Flick. With the eyelashes, I have found that it's best to keep it kind of simple. Okay, so maybe two little swishes of the brush instead of three. And then to really make her eyes look open, then you wanna come in and add a little dot. And notice I'm putting them on the right side. So it looks like the eyes are just looking down at the baby. Super cute. We're making pretty good progress here. We do have a few more things to work on together. And then um, we will kind of branch off and work a little bit more independently to finish. So if you need more time to work on your bird, take a moment. I'm going to talk about how to move forward and work on the branch. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm gonna say we should switch back to our medium brush, clean it out, right, and dry it off. So for the branch, what we want to do is take just our medium brush, push right into our white paint, and we can fill in this white space. We're putting white on white, so you're not going to notice it too much, but it's important to finish our painting and not leave anything open. So what I'm doing is just quickly putting some white on top of the branch, but this is also an opportunity. So if you're painting, make sure you take just a short break and look up. This is also an opportunity to add more to this branch because right now it's kind of simple. So um, you can use the white to create kind of like a little split here. So taking my brush and going right over the background and creating like a new branch. And if you like that, you can even add more than one. For instance, I'm gonna add one down here on this side of the canvas. Okay, and you can get creative with this. If you're inspired to add more, you can. I think I'll just add maybe one more here maybe one more here. I like the idea of kind of framing um, the way that the owls are sitting with a few little branches. So you can add those on. 
wherever you see fit. If you feel like the background's too plain, you can add long branches going up. Okay, lots of options with art. So you're gonna pick and choose the options that feel best to you. And then um, let's jazz up this branch. When you're ready to move on with me, it's a little plain. So what I'm gonna do is switch back to my tiny brush and I'm gonna take just a little bit of black, just a little bit, right? Cause black is a very strong color. Um, and so we don't need a lot. So what we can do is just start swishing just like this lightly on our branch, just in a few places to make it appear as though the branch is kind of rough. And if you find that the black is too dark, you can pause for a moment and mix a little bit of gray on your mixing plate, which would be black mixed in with white, mostly white. A little bit of black goes a long way. Something like that, just so that we have a little bit of detail on our branches so they look a little more realistic. I'm gonna add a little bit on these as well so they look like they belong. Okay, and it's important to stop before you overdo it. I almost overdid it, but I stopped before it was too late. So we're at the point now where we can start just kind of adding some finishing touches a little bit more independently. Okay, and what I'm going to do is give you guys a few suggestions, um, show you a few techniques, and then what you can do is add them at your own pace. So some of the things we definitely want to do, we want to add some legs, right? Some little legs on our owls. And again, I'm going to show you with the color black because it looks it shows up better on camera, but for you, you can consider maybe that orange color. And just a reminder, if you're making your own orange, it's mostly yellow, just a little drop of red. And sometimes you may also want to add some white to it, but the legs, we want to have them just sitting right on our branch. So again, I'm doing it black, but if you would like to do it a different color, you can. So like cute little long legs like this and make sure they are overlapping on top of the branch a little bit. See how the lines go? Just a little overlapped. Do it on both birds. And then we'll keep it kind of simple for the toes. I'm gonna to recommend maybe three, three toes coming out from these legs. So one, two, three. Same thing over here. One, two, three. Other things that we want to add to finish will be some leaves on our tree and then maybe some hearts or some special designs in the background. So let's quick talk about those leaves when you're ready to try that. I, I see my medium brush is a good brush for this. Some people prefer their small brush, so you can go ahead and choose which one you prefer. The first thing is we've got to mix some green. We made some green earlier here. Um, but you may want to make a slightly different color. So here's how you would make a good green. It's always mostly yellow. And if you're done with your yellow on other details, you can start mixing right in here. But if you think you might use yellow for something else, go back to mixing on your mixing plate. Okay, so I'm going to take a big scoop. That's a pretty big scoop of yellow. And then kind of a more small tap of blue just like that. Stir it right in and you should get green right away. If you want a darker green, you can add more blue to it. Be careful about adding black to your green, okay? So if that's something that interests you, you would only add a little bit, but it does make it really dark quickly, so be careful. So when you get a green that you like, you can start adding leaves everywhere. And leaves are gonna be those kind of almond shapes. Okay, so almond shape, which is just something like that, kind of, and then give it a little, little bit of paint filled in. I'm gonna add a few leaves on every little branch going different directions. Okay. 
What else could you add instead of these leaves? Maybe you wanna go in and add some flowers. That could be pretty too. And if you wanted to add flowers, you could perhaps mix some purple, which is red and blue and a little bit of white, or you can add little daisies, which are white and yellow. There's so many options when you're working with nature. So feel free to customize your the things that you add. Ask each other, what would you like to add? And then pick and choose the ideas that sound like they will work the best for both of you. All right, just a few more leaves on mine. Now, something you may want to add after you get your leaves is a little bit of a black outline. And if you're going to outline them, definitely switch to your tiny brush and I'll show you how that looks so you can decide. So a little bit of black around your leaves if you want them to kind of stand out. And I'm not worrying about my outline being perfect. But if you like this look, that's something that you could add. And if you're adding it, you probably want to do it on each canvas. And if you're deciding to skip it, you would skip it on both. So kind of talk to each other about whether or not you like that. I'm going to show you one more technique. I know these are a lot of techniques, but I'd like for you to have the information in case you'd like to try it. One other thing you could do is add a little um, little swish of white to your leaves. Okay, so this is your small brush also. So I'll show you here. You can take a little bit of white and just slide it just right on top of the leaf to give it a little highlight. Kind of makes it have a little bit of a three-dimensional look, right? Kind of a 3D look. If you're doing that, chat with each other and um, do it on both if you're choosing to try it. Now this is when we get to kind of the end of our video together where you could start adding all types of custom additions. And we talked a little bit about that as we started, maybe adding some flowers. Um, perhaps you wanna be inspired to add some things to your background. So why don't we talk um, just a little bit about doing that and then you can get working and kind of work as long as you need to, even beyond this video. Some other things that you might enjoy doing is outlining your birds. And I'm going to show you these things kind of quick so you can watch and decide if you like it. So if you want to take a little black and kind of outline the wings like I did right here, anything that's going to be a small detail, if you want to add it, it should be done with your small brush, right? And anything that is going to be a big detail, switch to a bigger brush. So we kind of have to use our best judgment with that. So you can outline um, if you like that idea. You can also add maybe some cute designs to your background. Some hearts would be kind of a cute addition. I'm gonna make just a little bit of purple and add a little heart in mine. So just a refresher, when you make your purple, it's red, blue, and white, the colors of the American flag. And purple is optional, but if you like purple, you can incorporate it into your painting. So I'm gonna put a little heart here. And for this, since it's a bigger detail, I'm actually using my medium brush. And if you wanna add hearts, you can do them in any color, any size, anywhere on your canvas. One more little thing I want to show you just for ideas is you could go back in and add um, maybe more to your owl's belly. So I'm going to take some white paint and add a few little white swishes to the belly just to make these feathers look a little bit fluffier on the baby. And if you like that idea, you can also do it on the mama bird. And of course, if you've got the time and some paint left over, go back in and do some edits, 
maybe a second coat of paint on something if you think it could use it. So when you feel totally done with your painting, if you have paint left over, you can paint those edges, those sides that we talked about. And then of course, don't forget to put your initials or your name on your artwork. I usually like to sign it somewhere down on the bottom right. You can put the year too, if you would like, just as a little reminder of what you made together. Now, this video is going to end, but that doesn't mean you have to be done. So if you enjoyed this painting experience, you can continue working. Just a little reminder, your paint will be dry for probably up to an hour. So wherever you got creative, make sure you put your paintings in a good, safe place to dry. And um, if you got any paint on your hands, then you're a real artist because that's exactly what happens when you paint. Should come off with soap and water, no problem. I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. Thank you so much. And if you would like to share photos, please be sure to send them into your school so they can be shared in the yearbook. Hope you had a great time and I hope we can paint again in the future.